Okay, so um, today we're going to go over the hand sewn ditty bag. I have a bunch of things here that you're going to need in order to make one. I uh, wanted to do this in the field, but the weather hasn't been cooperating, so we're just going to go ahead and do it here. Uh, first thing I have is the material. Um, these happen to be pieces of denim that I stole from a little pair of work jeans that are worn out. One's just a square piece that we're going to use to make a bag. The other one is a pant leg. I don't know if you can see, but it's the round of the leg. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is a needle. I actually have two needles here. You can see them. One is a sail needle. The other one's a regular sewing needle. Um, I'm going to be using the sail needle. It's a larger needle. Uh, the thing about it that's kind of neat <clears throat> that you've probably seen is it's a three-sided needle. It's kind of large, but it's good for punching through heavy material. So if you're in the field and you're fixing a pack or a strap or some kind of webbing or something, this is going to be easier to push through that than you know even a large sewing needle. And uh, it's also less likely to poke through your finger. I've done that a bunch of times. <clears throat> for my thread, you can use the inside of paracord, you know, the gut lines, you could use actual thread, anything you can get your hands on. Um, today, I took apart a piece of Mason's line, the line they use to mark off areas when they're gonna pour concrete or pull a straight line in construction jobs. Uh, it's bright orange, it's just about the right thickness. It's a little heavy for thread, but it'll work. And being bright orange, it'll be easier for you to see in the video. Um, I also have some miscellaneous stuff. I got a lighter for melting paracord. I got some scrap navy blue reflective paracord, some beads, and stuff like that that we we'll use to make a cinch. But um, to get started, uh, let's go ahead and use the pant leg piece. We're going to turn that inside out. So we have it ready. Now the way this is going to work is we're going to sew one end closed and the other end will be our top. So you only have to basically sew across one side to make a pouch, although we're going to do some work on the top as well to make it so that we can cinch it close. We're going to grab our sail needle, sail needle, the first piece of thread. Thread the needle, which I'll be lucky if I can see because it's dark in here. Got it. And I'm going to show you a couple different stitches today. Um, the first stitch we're going to do that we'll start out with that you can use is called a whip stitch. And it's a real simple stitch. The way I like to start mine, I've seen people tie knots in the end which works great if you have something heavy like paracord and you're doubling it up and you make a big fat knot and it acts as a stop knot. But if you're sewing, what I like to do is I like to punch through and I'll punch back down in. So as you can see, both sides are through the same side of the material now. And I'll just tie that off in a knot. Um, I'll probably use a square knot, but you can use any kind of knot you want. And that'll lock in your starting end. I've tied that in a square knot. It's good and snug. Now we can run with it. So to do the whip stitch, all you're doing is you're looping around. So I'm going to the outside of the material. I'm going to punch it through. So the loop locks over. We go to the back side of the material again, punch it through. I'm gonna pull it. For whatever reason, there we go. Back side, 
punch it through. Keep an eye on this end. Snug that up. And you can do this all the way across. Um, you get a couple of these started so I can show you. And I'm going to jump off camera and I'll finish it up. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing. Even though it shouldn't really take that long. Alright, so. This is a pretty shoddy whip stitch. But as you can see, you're just punching it through. Wrapping it around the outside edge. And you'll go all the way across the bottom doing that. I'll finish it up and I'll be right back. Okay, so <clears throat> I've sewn across the entirety of the bag. As you can see, that running stitch, it's not pretty, but it's going to do what we want it to do. Now, to end it, all I'm going to do is the last loop before I pull it tight. I'm going to take my needle and thread, I'm going to run it through there, you know, maybe three, four times. Three, we'll do four. Four. And I'm going to cinch that down as that pulls tight. That's going to make a knot. <clears throat> and that's going to hold it closed. Uh, something I forgot to mention that you might need when you're doing all this is a pair of scissors or something to cut your thread with. I got a knife, so I'm good. And boom. Bottom is stitched across. I'll bring it up to you one more time and show it to you. That's a whip stitch. Basically just wraps around the outside edge. That's all it does. <clears throat> now, to uh, put something in the top so that you can cinch this bag closed, what I am going to do, I think I'm gonna use my awl. You can use anything, knife, hole punch, razor, whatever you have. I'm going to go down you know, a good three quarters of an inch from the top edge and I'm going to make a hole. A decent size hole so I can find it again. This hole is where I'm going to feed my drawstring in and out. So I have a little hole. Now what I'm going to do is I made that low enough so that I can fold my top edge over it, hopefully. This drawstring, eh, I didn't do a great job. But, so I'm gonna fold that top edge over all the way around. I don't know if it's gonna hold. And we're doing all this inside out so that when we turn it right side out, it ends up having the finished side exposed, which, is subjective because you know maybe you want the inside of the denim exposed yeah I think it's gonna end up with my hole right on top of the edge but that's fine because it'll still do the same job <clears throat> now you can flatten this out iron it line it up do whatever you want to keep it a little neater I'm just gonna kind of buy eye it starting here and what I'm gonna do is use Another stitch. I don't know if this is going to be long enough or not, but we'll try. And this stitch is called the running stitch, and this is the stitch that you're probably familiar with. Um, you know, it looks like all the stitches in your regular garments. I'm going, to punch. I'm going to do the same thing as I did down below. I'm going to punch through, punch back, tie it off. Punch through. Okay, so that's tied off. 
So I'm just going to eyeball them. What I like to do, when I'm doing a running stitch like this by hand, is I like to kind of imagine, I don't know, maybe like quarter inch, three eighth inch st stitches and try to keep them even so that it looks nice. The reality is I don't always succeed at that. I'm probably not going to succeed at that now, but it'll be functional, which is more important than the aesthetics for this project. stitches in here and I'll give you an idea what it looks like. So that's a pretty good idea there. Okay, on the inside edge of the bag you can see that running stitch. Now, that in itself is enough. You would be done. Sometimes, and I'll do this now before I finish sewing around the top and show you the finished product. Sometimes what I like to do, because I think it looks nice and I think it reinforces it a little bit, is I, when you get to the end of the stitch, which I'm not at the end of the stitch, but I'll do it for demonstration purposes, is I double back and I sew through the gaps in the stitch that you just saw. And what that does is it makes it a little bit more durable, but also Makes it look a little bit more like one continuous stitch. If you're good at it, it looks really nice. What I'm doing right now isn't exactly the best example, but it'll give you a pretty good idea what it's going to look like. And when you do it this way, since you're doubling back on your stitches, you're going to end up where you started and you'll have your uh, starting end and then you'll have your finishing end and you can tie those two together to end it and then everything's all secured together. Like I said, I kind of like, ooh, that's ugly. Kind of like doing it this way because it gives it a nice stitched look. And then you can tag the two sides together and you have a nice running line. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up, show you how to put the cinch in, and we'll move on to the next bag. Okay, we're back. Finished sewing up the top edge of the bag, and the bottom edge of the bag's done. So now we're going to turn it inside out so that the finished side is exposed. Now with the running stitch, you'll see sometimes, not the running stitch, you always see the running stitch. With the whip stitch, sometimes you will see the stitching's exposed, depending on how tight you do it, you know, whether or not you had a running stitch or whatnot, but in the bottom of the bag, you can see some of the whip stitch, which is fine. The top edge of the bag has both the running stitch that I showed you and also the variation 
where you double back and it makes kind of a straight line. <clears throat> now I'll give you an idea on how to put a drawstring in this so you can cinch it up. What I like to do is take a piece of paracord. Seems to work well. Shot cord will work. Any kind of cord will work. I could probably put the mason's line in it if I wanted to. And I have a paracord needle. You can probably make something else again that would help you feed the cord through. Um, I have fed cord through just on its own. It's possible, just takes a little time. But I'm gonna show you how to do it with a paracord needle to save time for this video. I'm now at the end of my paracord where I freshly cut it. Feed it in. I've heard this called other things too, like a Chicago screw or something else. I don't really know. It's basically a needle that's three inches long. It's hollow. It's threaded in the end, so the paracord just threads right into it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that hole that we made. I'm going to push that needle in. I'm just going to push that needle all the way around in this little loop end that we folded over and sewed closed. I'll work the bag back, push the needle in, work the bag back, push the needle in, work the bag back. And I'll keep doing this until I make it all the way around and push the needle back out the other side. I'm sure you could carve some contraction out of wood or bone or anything really to make one of these, but like I said, you could do the same exact thing with nothing more than an actual piece of paracord. It just takes some time. You kind of have to feel it, feel it around inside the bag. Get this thing pulled through. Alright. So once you have it in there, one thing you have to do is make sure the bag is fully open. When it's fully open, then you can decide, all right, that should be enough tag end for me. Unscrew this side. Cut this side. And then you could put a cord stop on there or whatever you have to uh, make it cinch and lock. I'm just going to use a little wooden bead that I have. Get the bead fed on. Try a quick overhand knot on the end so the bead doesn't come off. And there you have it. You have your bag with your cinch and your bead. And then all you have to do when you want to close it up is take your stuff, throw it in there, pull that drawstring tight, slide that bead down, and you have a closed pouch. Now that's how to make a quick bag out of, like say a pant leg or something like that. But what if you want to do something quick and simple and all you have is you know, say a square piece of fabric or a rectangular piece of fabric or something like that. We can do kind of the same thing. All we're going to do is fold it in half. And the difference is going to be that now we're going to have to sew two edges instead of one. So I will get my needle and I will get a new piece of thread. I'm going to show you a different stitch on this one. So far we've covered the whip stitch. We've covered the running stitch. We've covered a variation on the running stitch. And this is going to be kind of a variation on the whip stitch. It's called the locking stitch. Do everything just like I did before. I'm going to go through. I'm going to come back.
tie that off. Like I said, if I was using heavier material, I, I, actually I might even be able to just make a knot on this and use a stop knot, I don't know. But I've always liked to just tie it off and leave a little tag in because depending on what you're doing and where you end up, you might come back, you might be able to tie off to that. It all depends on the project. Okay, so for this, you're gonna do a whip stitch again. You're gonna come around the back side. You're gonna punch the needle through. Only this time, you're gonna take this end, you're gonna wrap it around the needle one time. You're gonna pull the needle through. And that basically ties a little overhand knot in your loop. So then you can run around the back side again, like you do with the whip stitch, push the needle through, wrap it around one time. Try not to get it all bunched up. Because I think I just made a knot in my line, maybe not. Nope, we're good. That makes another knot. You just keep doing this over and over again in your whip stitch. your needle through, take the end on this back side, wrap it around one time, pull your line through, so you get to the end and it tightens it. I'll do two or three more and I'll show it to you so you can kind of see what's going on here. Punch it through, wrap it around, so much line and since I unravel the three strand twist to get this for thread kind of wants to twist back up on itself sometimes it's not a big deal run into the same issue I'm sure using paracord or anything else that might have some memory to it Again, this one is called the locking stitch. I guess the idea behind it is it's a stitch that's easy to repair. And also, since you're basically tying little knots over and over again, if the bag gets damaged or the stitch gets damaged, you know, it's less likely for the whole thing to fall apart because, you know, it's locked and locked and locked and locked and locked and locked in a series. So hold this up close so you can take a look at it. And it's your running stitch, or your whip stitch. I'm sorry, I keep confusing them. But if you look down this side, see that straight line? It looks like there's a line running through it. Each stitch is moving on to the next stitch and it's locking over itself. So what I'll do is I'll finish off this little bag um, I'm going to use the same technique on the top where I fold it over and uh, we'll lock that in. But I'm going to show you something about that when we get to it. For now, I'm just going to finish stitching this. Okay, so something I did differently on this bag. <clears throat> I'll try and show you again the profile of the locking stitch. Oh, it has that running line all the way down it, but this side, it's all whip stitched. <clears throat> you stop your stitch. I think I picked like a half inch from the top of the bag. And I need to tie that off. Don't feel bound to tying off your stitches with this loop with three or four wraps every time that makes a knot you can do it it works fine but I've also tied off stitches lots of other ways I've used just plain overhand knots I've used 
like back stitching. I've actually weaved it through the stitches before to, to tie it off. So this isn't the be all end all of uh, ending your stitches, but it works and it's simple. All right, so I'll cut these two ends off. I started and finished. And I will show you. So the sides are done, the two sides making a square pouch. When you fold your top over, because you didn't finish that side, the half inch of that side, what you're going to end up with is the hole that you need to feed your drawstring through. Let's see if I can hold this up close enough that you can see it. See how it's going to fold over and leave that little hole? It's going to leave the hole for your drawstring. So, what I'll do now is I'll take a few minutes, just throw a running stitch around this again, and come back and put the drawstring on it, and we'll have our ditty eggs. Okay, so for this bag, this is your finished product. You have whip stitch, actually locking stitch on two sides, running stitch to make your loop over on the top, and the drawstring comes through the side where you left it open. Again, that top just cinches closed, and you have a little pouch. So those are two variations on the hand-sewn ditty bag. Um, that's not all you can do. Obviously, you can do just about anything that your imagination can create. Um, you can make shaped bottoms on them so they fit cook kits. Um, and it's all something that you could totally do. Uh, mankind's been sewing for thousands of years and people have been making their own garments as recently as say a few hundred years ago. So this is something that you can totally do. It's not difficult and you can start working on you know, fixing and making some of your own gear. I hope this was helpful.